These are the highest paid cybersecurity skills to learn for 2025. So the main takeaway I want you to take from this video is that not only should you be focusing on getting certifications, which I'm sure many of you are working towards or already have on your resume, 2025 is going to be about getting the skills and the technical projects onto your resume so that recruiters and hiring managers can actually consider you for a job. Because otherwise, if you just have one or two certifications on your resume, even if they're well-known certifications, it just may not be enough for a recruiter to give you a call and invite you for an interview because they don't know if you actually have the technical skills along with the foundational knowledge to actually pass a cybersecurity interview, which is why recruiters go for candidates that have the skills, technical projects, and certifications on their resume, and we all have to start somewhere. So the first thing I want you to learn is actually security auditing. Now, I've actually done a free live GRC workshop covering GRC and security auditing, so I would recommend checking that out if you're a complete beginner and don't know what GRC is, but I personally think security auditing is going to be a huge, huge area in cybersecurity, especially in 2025. Basically, there are certain security standards, policies, frameworks that companies have to comply against to be able to do business, to be able to basically do the right thing to protect their data, their customers, their employees, etc. So for a company to prove that they are following certain regulations, certain security standards, they will basically find an external auditor to come in and audit their security program, their applications, everything they're doing to keep their organization secure. And the auditor is going to come in basically with a auditing checklist and go down the list and see whether or not they comply with certain standards and requirements. And once that is complete, hopefully if everything goes well, then the company will get an official certification that they have completed this audit and with a final audit report. Now, even though this sounds like a very tedious process, companies actually want to go through audits because their customers want them to do it. For example, if you're a customer who is looking for an HR software to buy, then you're going to look at maybe five different vendors and maybe one of them has everything you need, all the fancy tools that the HR team is looking for, but they haven't done any audits and they don't necessarily have tangible proof that they can keep your organization's data secure. Especially if it's in the HR software, that means they're going to be handling your company's employees' data, contact information, salary information. This is all very sensitive info. So you're not just going to trust any old HR software that hasn't undergone some series of auditing because it would just be bad for the business if there was a data breach. And you know, that's in general just bad for your company's reputation. And a lot of companies will avoid working with companies that haven't done audits. This is why I really think, especially with the rise of more tech companies, more AI companies, more new startups that are just popping up everywhere because of Gen AI and the accessibility of development and coding tools out there. There's way more companies that are creating products and all these companies eventually are going to realize that they need to go through certain audits to get the customers that they want with the big pockets and the money that they're looking for. So audits tie to a company's bottom line and their ability to make money because their customers want them to do them. And of course, it keeps the overall internet a more secure place. So I personally do think that a lot of hiring is going to happen in the GRC and security auditing space. And even though there aren't that many security auditing certifications for beginners, I do think it's a really great area to go into, just starting at a compliance analyst level, a private privacy analyst level, a junior GRC analyst, I would look for titles around that area and just know as much as you can about different auditing frameworks and certifications. For example, ISO 27001, SOC 2, PCI, HIPAA, those are popular ones that you can look into first. And I'll also link a few GRC trainings I recommend in the description below. The second skill on this list is SOC operations. This means how to use an SIEM, how to read alerts, how to dig through potentially hundreds, thousands of logs to be able to find the right information to help with whatever alert or incident they are working on. Now, there are lots of different tools out there for this, specifically for SOC simulations, where companies will host simulations for an SOC analyst, where you can go in as if you were working for the company and basically respond to certain alerts from SIEMs, dig into them, triage them, and just basically the day-to-day -day of a security operations center. SOC analysts are one of the most entry-level cybersecurity jobs out there, so I'd highly recommend getting some skills in this area. I'll also link some SOC analyst trainings. Your main job is to monitor your company's networks for any signs of a cyber attack, review any alerts or incidents that pop up. Sometimes this could be directly from a user, whether it be a ticket submitted to your team, or other times it could be auto-generated from an SIEM based on alerts that the SOC team has already set up and automated. And part of your job may also be to tweak or create new alerts. There's a lot of tweaking and refactoring that go into SOC alerts, so that's definitely more of a continuous improvement project. Number three on this list, which is also related to SOC, 
is incident response. Now, this personally, I think is a completely different skill set because if you're handling an incident, this means you're spinning up a bridge line and leading a call. You're pulling in the right contacts, the right stakeholders, the right technical people to be able to deep dive and figure out what exactly is going on. Or if there's an ongoing attack, you have to figure out what to do in the incident response cycle. And that is a whole nother scenario compared to just being on the ground looking through alerts. Typically, SOC level one, which are the most junior on the team, are going to be looking through the alerts. And when they find an alert that may be really suspicious and it's not something that they can resolve on their own or they need more information, then they will escalate it to SOC level two or the incident response team. Depending on the company, there may be more tiers or more layers of people in between. But typically, incident response is one step above a typical SOC analyst level one. I'd highly recommend looking into the hierarchy of the whole SOC or security operations center if you're interested in blue teaming or defensive security, since this is the exact environment you'll be working in when you start your job. Typically for incident response, this is going to be someone a bit more senior on the team. Not to say that someone junior may not be ever involved in an incident. Obviously, this is where training comes in. But if you're a beginner trying to get into cybersecurity, trust me, this is an area you want to focus on. At least learn what the incident response lifecycle is and the different steps that are involved, because this will help you way down the line. When you're in an entry level role, you're already going to know the basics of how to handle an incident, even if you're not the one spinning it up. And as mentioned, it would be really helpful if you are on call, which is very common in cybersecurity. And not only having foundational SOC skills and having some background in incident response is really going to set you apart from everyone else at your level. All right, so 2025 is coming up and a new year also means new skills. If you're currently planning your new year's resolutions like I am, upscaling should definitely be on your list. This is something I'm personally working on as well in 2025, especially because in cybersecurity, you're always constantly learning, things are constantly changing and evolving. And not to mention that because a lot of promotions and hiring happens in the March and April timeframe, January is the perfect time to learn as much as you can and starting the courses to help you grow in your cyber career, which will also lead to career growth and salary growth. If you're currently looking for ways to upskill yourself for 2025, I'd recommend the Simply Learn cybersecurity courses as well as their other learning programs in data science, generative AI, and project management on top of their cybersecurity programs. Simply Learn's program partners include the CISSP, CompTIA, ISACA, and other professional organizations to help you learn the technical skills that are needed to start your career in cybersecurity as well as move your career forward. They have cybersecurity boot camps, courses that'll prepare you for certifications like the CISSP, Security Plus, the CISA Certified Information Security Auditor Cert, and a lot more. Start your New Year's journey towards growth with a 20% scholarship on their top courses using the link in my description. Thank you to Simply Learn for sponsoring this portion of the video. And now let's get back to the rest of the topics. Okay, so what's next? Okay, number four on this list is network security control. I would say this is one of the least popular areas in IT and cybersecurity, but it is also one of those jobs with really great job security because it is a very niche area and it requires a very technical skill set. Designing, maintaining, implementing the entire organization's computer networks. This could be anything from making sure the employee's VPN is set up and working, doing any patches or updates for all the different servers, all the different network devices that keep your network up, bringing in new tools and technologies, working with the IT team or the SRE or site reliability engineering team to make sure you have availability covered as part of the CIA triad. And nowadays, uptime is really important for most users. And if you're working for a company that is global and you have employees working around the clock 24 hours a day, some in the US, some in Asia, some in Europe, then a networking team is going to be even more important. And of course, it depends on whether or not your company is on the cloud or using their own data centers or a hybrid of both where some resources are in the cloud and other resources are on-prem or in a data center. So there's a lot that goes into networking and network security. And while it personally is not my strong suit, I do know a lot of networking professionals who are really good at their jobs and are basically irreplaceable to the company. So if you want to be that employee that's irreplaceable and there for a very long time, then learning network security is going to be a really, really huge plus. And finally, last but not least on this list, number five is cloud. Now I did mention cloud a little bit in networking, but personally, I do think that nowadays, more companies are moving towards a cloud model or at least going for a hybrid model. Whereas before, a lot of companies will have the typical brick and mortar data center where they host their own servers. Nowadays, it's way cheaper and way more efficient and effective to use a cloud provider like Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, AWS. These are probably the three biggest cloud platforms that you've heard of. And a lot of them also have free training, which is another reason I recommend beginners to learn them. Even if you're not necessarily interested right now in going into cloud, if you're someone who is a beginner in cybersecurity, you don't know exactly which area you're going into yet. 
I know that in general, cybersecurity is one of those tricky areas to get into. You're basically learning skills, a bunch of skills, throwing them at the wall, seeing what you're interested in, seeing what sticks, and seeing what employers are looking for, and finding the overlap of those three things. And cloud security, or cloud in general, is going to be a really great asset to add onto your resume, even if you don't think you want to be a cloud engineer. Even if you don't know anything about cloud security, I would recommend it taking a few of those courses. Microsoft Azure has some really great ones to start with if you're interested. Again, they're free, so you can just find them on their website. I can also link some in the description as well if you're interested. The world is moving forward and it's moving towards the cloud. It's moving towards AI. It's moving towards IoT. And out of all the skills on this list, cloud is technically one of the newer ones. And as a cybersecurity professional, you always want to be trying to learn what's new, trying to keep up with the leading edge, the newest technologies. This could also be gen AI security or how to secure IoT devices. But cloud security has a larger general application and it's great to have at least as a keyword on your resume that could potentially take you somewhere down the line in your career. So if anything, this is definitely more of a reminder to keep up with whatever new skills are coming up and learn them as you go. For example, if you're interested in malware analysis, you should be trying to learn the newest language that malware developers are writing their malware in, not one of the oldest ones or the most common ones. Of course, you can learn the most common ones as well that'll help you, but also picking up the newer skills, also picking up the newer languages so that in a few years, your skills will be still applicable and employers will still want them compared to someone who hasn't learned anything new or hasn't upskilled basically in the last few years. So stay competitive, learn new things, that's basically the goal in cybersecurity. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. Hopefully this video was helpful. Sorry, it is very dark in here. I actually have my ring light on and it's one of my first times filming with a ring light actually, but it basically gets dark at 4 p.m. Hopefully this video was so helpful though. And if you liked it, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Also feel free to stay connected on LinkedIn and Discord, linked in my description. Also Instagram, which I am regularly posting on almost every day. So if you want free cybersecurity resources, I share them on there. Feel free to follow along. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.